Thank you, Jérôme, for the introduction and for inviting us to this panel. Uh, we don't have a lot of time, so I'm not going to speak a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to start first by uh, hearing uh, the two speakers uh, describe uh, their project a little bit more, and then we'll uh, head on to the discussion. Uh, I will ask some questions, and you uh, are very welcome to you know, raise your hand and interrupt at any moment, uh, just not uh, for during the three minutes of introduction, but afterwards uh, it's a discussion, and uh, definitely uh, if you have questions, don't hesitate to uh, ask them. So uh, we will start with Sophie, um, and I will let you present uh, your project. Uh, can we have the slides of the first project? Okay, it's already there. Thank you. Okay, hi everyone, I'm Sophie, and I'm, work I'm coming from Switzerland. I work for PETSI, which is uh, the federation, the Swiss Federation of Independent Clubs and Festivals. There's about 200 members, and I'm working for the ticketing service. I work as a volunteer. I have a full-time job that has nothing to do with music anymore, and uh, so this is just for fun. <laughs> so it's PETSI ticketing service, and it's a division, so as I said, of the Swiss Federation of Independent Clubs and Festivals. The main thing you should know is that we are a non-profit. We do it for the kicks, basically, really. And uh, it works. Uh, it initially started then as, a, as an agenda. And since it's Switzerland and we speak so many languages, it's available in all the languages you can see up here. And last year we sold, uh, well, this is not so much, but since Switzerland is very small, it actually represents quite a bit of tickets on the market. So our service is available to all our members, and it took, we kept the costs really, really low. And uh, the good thing is we are compatible with other ticketing systems, so we read everybody. And uh, there's no extra fees for cancellation or like print at home or insurance, no hidden fees, no nothing. And we support our clubs and festivals. We help them if we had, they have cancellation. We give them the readers, we have support like throughout the whole year. And basically, we're at the service of our members. Also, we handle a lot of uh, settings, like different types of tickets, prices, uh, multi-sites, events, etc., etc. Of course, the purchases are compatible with mobile purchase. And we have also small points of sales. It's usually independent record shops and uh, sometimes tourism offices as well. Um, basically, uh, it started as an agenda, and it relies on, well, that's the team, that's the whole team. Uh, six to eight volunteers, uh, to which I belong. We have a developer that works 80%, an administrative assistant at 40%, and an accountant. So basically, our ticketing system runs with those resources, which is fun. These are our projects for the future. Improve the search, improve, well, use machine learning systems to improve the system that we have already, build new partnerships in Switzerland and abroad to be stronger. And uh, we're also working on a statistics tool. Those of you who work for clubs or festivals may have filled at some point a survey for live GMA. Uh, we're trying to improve the, the data collecting because it's very tedious. And uh, hopefully we'll have a solution for, well, this winter. So we may be able to share it if some, fe some federations are interested, well, get in touch with me. I'll be around. Thank you. Thank you, Sophie. Just one question and then uh, we'll continue uh, with uh, Jonas. Um, I was wondering, compared to other European countries or other countries in the world even, um, are you kind of a unique system or uh, do you see similar um, initiatives uh, somewhere else in the world? I know that uh, France has launched something called SoCup, but the difference is that uh, SoCup is uh, based, well, they actually hired a company to build the system and the company is handling it. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I've been told in France. And uh, we are so far, as far as I know, a unique, uh, oh, a unique service, yeah. Thank you. So, uh, without further ado, let's uh, continue with Jonas, and then we'll head up to the discussion. Can we have the second presentation uh, on the screen, oh, okay. please? Here we go. Hi, I'm Jonas. I'm head of research at Big Cell Music, um, which is a 
University for Applied Science and Arts. So we got students uh, getting a bachelor's degree in music management, musicians, and uh, music tech. Um, we also have a research department, which I'm the head of, and one of our projects is about data science. I'm not the first guy who tries to combine data and music. He was first, the OG was Pythagoras. Um, we have started a project with AB and Club Circuit, Club Circuit, which is actually the Flemish version of Petsy. And we ask them every year, what are the problems you're facing? We have internships. A lot of our students go do an internship at these companies and we ask them, what's your problem? And they tell, we, we, we found out that data, data management and, and experimenting with the data, looking how to uh, make profit out of the data, was one big black hole. Nobody was working on it. They had a lot of data, but weren't using it once each year. They looked through their Excel files or their CSV files. They got some nightmares from that and they just put it away until the next year it was due. So we thought we can help them. And that's why we created the Venue Intelligence Platform. And what we did was combine all the private data these concert organizers were collecting. We were combining it with publicly available data. And we created the Venue Intelligence Platform. And I got some examples here of what it is. Uh, the very basic is just visualizing the data for venues, which is uh, sometimes a problem for them because they're not really data literate yet, and we're trying to change that. We're trying to make them more data literate. What you see here is the average yearly radio plays for headlining acts in Ancien Belgique, and um, not surprisingly, Studio Brussels uh, alternative radio station has the most plays. Uh, we can then link that data to try and, pr and, and, and see what makes a successful show what makes a successful show. The impact of music genre, for example, is on tickets sold. What we see here is that reggae shows are doing very well, while country music is not doing as well. So these insights are very valuable for bookers, but we as researchers, we wanted to take it one step further, because for us, this is just basic statistics. It's fun, but it's not really challenging. We wanted to predict the amount of tickets that will be sold for a show in the future. Yeah? So we want a booker to be able to put in a band and the system will predict how many tickets it will sell based on previous shows, based on the publicly available data. And I have some examples of, um, of uh, predictions here. If we would book SpinVis in the main hall, we predict 1,300 tickets. Strand of Oaks would be 1,600 tickets. And this is something um, very valuable, we think, for bookers. We can then compare the popularity of your artist to an average uh, artist in that venue. Um, what they told us is they don't, they're not really interested in the, um, in the prediction as such, but they want to open the black box of the AI. They want to know why is this machine predicting these amount of tickets. And that's why we try to visualize it like this, to give them a bit more insight. So that's what we're building for them. We are a research group embedded in a university college, which means we, we're not trying to make money. We're just experimenting with ideas and try to give it back to the market and let the market do what, it, what they want. Um, our current project is a recommender. We're trying to build a recommender system for, not for users, which is fairly common, but for venues. We want venues to see, oh, what do you recommend? Which band should we book? Het depot in Leuven should book Tourist LMC, for example, AB should book Wolf Mother, Tomorrowland should book Steve Aoki. So you see there, we're, we're getting somewhere. These are pretty good predictions, but this would be fun to turn around as well. If I'm uh, um, Alesso and I want to know some clubs in Europe that I haven't visited yet, I could use this machine and get predictions. Okay, that was it. Thank you, Jonas. Uh, one question that I've got about your service, are you also using uh, artificial intelligence uh, within your service? Uh, and if yes, uh, what are your, uh, what are the, uh, how are you training the algorithms to predict uh, things? Well, artificial intelligence is uh, like a buzzword these days, so I always, when I come somewhere where people are not tech savvy, I say I use artificial intelligence, but here it wouldn't fly, I think. So what we're, what we're actually doing is building predictive models, um, which sometimes gets called AI, but it's just predictive modeling. This is advanced statistics based on data from the future 
uh, data from the past and publicly available data, data from the future we're trying to generate. To, pre we don't to have predict it yet. the future. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, there is a common approach in both of your initiatives, I think. It's, uh, uh, both of them are non-profit. Uh, they both came, uh, I think, from uh, uh, just uh, noticing some issues uh, coming from the music sector and trying to answer them. And you both came with um, uh, teams that are very flexible because um, uh, they're not, uh, uh, maybe they don't have uh, the, the business goal as a, as a main uh, goal in the organization. Can you a bit uh, both explain uh, 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 how do you feel about that and uh, how do you feel, what's the difference uh, uh, you feel in your business uh, um, compared to uh, classic ticketing platforms or a c uh, another business that would predict uh, you know, um, statistics uh, but out for money? for uh, other businesses. Uh, we'll start with Sophie. Yeah, I'm sure, for example, um, it, uh, obviously it, uh, our system arose from needs. And then after a while, we noticed that the market was really getting interested in ticketing. We started like, oh, we need to have this and it needs to work for our, our members. Initially, our members were not, were, were not even interesting for ticketing systems. And suddenly, other ticketing systems started, oh, well, you could sell through a commercial uh, site or blah, blah, blah. And suddenly, it became a lot more interesting and a lot more well there were a lot of more 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 issues with the, the, the notion of ticketing and now we know the data we 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 have and we like pick up along the way it's really valuable and we don't want to give that data to big companies because we know that th this is how they will kill the imp independent music the local music the local particularities so we want to avoid giving that data to anyone else than giving it back to the clubs or festivals when they need it. That's a very interesting point. The, um, the main goal for our project when we started was to create more experimental space for the venues who participated. Because they're subsidized venues, but they need to make a certain amount of money each year. Um, and I think the pressure on a club to, to, get to make money will make them book a little more safe. And that's boring. So we want to give them the room with this project to book more experimentally. Because if you're sure that you're going to sell a certain amount of tickets and you can, um, you can experiment with the different parameters, you can actually book more experimental. And that's the big goal. For um, the data and who's the owner as such, that's we're on in a very, very good position because I'm a very neutral uh, place. I'm a university college, so everybody trusts me. Mm -hmm. But it's very important we keep that trust. So we need to make good, um, good deals about the data, who gets to view the data. And we see the music industry, it, it still is very conservative. But they do not want to share data with each other. Even if they're in the same organization, the same club circuit, the different clubs in the club circuit, they're still um, not willing to share data. There's still a lot of resistance. Yeah. It's the same for Switzerland also because there's a sort of defiance like, oh, what would they do with that data and everything? So I think, yeah, it's a very sensitive issue. So far we've been trusted as well because we are like head heading the federation. So there's no, we're supposed to be neutral as well and also have some distance and some critical distance as well about what we do with the system, with, well, how those policies should go and like, have room to think headspace and also experimental space for that and i think this is really important and it shouldn't be rushed uh, by the market and we should like serve as a as a buffer to enable the venues and clubs and federations to think ponderate what the next move should be about about the market the data mm. and the ticketing i th i just want to make clear that i'm not against the market doing its job and doing markets thing because what we do is we build knowledge experimental knowledge uh, for which the market we think is not ready yet mm -hmm. we talked with a lot of ticketing services we talked with the big players as well with live nation and they said we're not willing to invest in something like this as a private company just yet we tried it it didn't work um, so what we're trying to do is um, get to the level to make it uh, viable for the market and then give the knowledge to everyone so we're not playing favorites with independence 
or commercials. We're just trying to build the knowledge, get good partnerships, and then get the knowledge out there so the market can develop the prototype into a working software application. So when you're saying uh, um, give it to uh, everyone, uh, does it mean that all the tools you're using are open source and that you're documenting, keeping the code, uh, thinking about that already? Yeah, the backend is uh, um, open source and we're going to share it. Actually, we got a funding from the government which um, will make sure this project will develop for another two years. And one of the key factors there is we have to make everything public because we're funded with public money. We need to give it back to the community. Is it, is it the same for you? Are you all open source? So the code is ours and we're willing to share it with any other federations that be interested in. It still needs a bit of work. Well, open source doesn't mean that everything is free. There's still like a couple of work to be done, for example, to standardize it for other federations, but we're more than open to share it. And also the potential statistics tool as well. So it's, and I think it's very important that those things that are made collectively should be shared. As you said, like public funding equals public results. It's something that should belong to the public. Well, it's not exactly the same for our case, but since it's like been made for federations, well, it can be shared by federations. Thank you. Uh, now let's open the questions to the, to the audience. Uh, do we have some microphones? Otherwise I will go around to the I will go to the audience with some microphones. Ah, no, you've got one. Okay. There is one first question uh, at the first row there. Yes. Then I see another one, and I don't see, because I don't see the back of the room, so tell me if there are other questions afterwards. So go ahead. I've worked with a few different companies in your spaces and working with a couple now. So how do you envision collaborating uh, you only want to collaborate with collective organizations or else you want to collaborate with, um, I mean, I know you collaborate now with other ticketing sources, but other companies in the festival or venue space. And for your recommender, if it's public information and open source, how do you want to collaborate with other companies worldwide that could use that information or could also share their recommendation engines and their algorithms and their prediction and their machine learning based on predictions and, and actual what happens after the predicts, you know, after the predictions. So if you could talk a little bit about how you intend to collaborate with other companies. Thank you. Well, for example, if in our case, it's a, it's a fed, it, it works for a federation. So it, it would be really complicated to uh, do a cooperative system or a company. So it, it's we would like to keep working collectively with, yeah, mainly with federations. Perhaps I mean other proposals can be studied or analyzed. But so far, our intention was to work with other European federations and perhaps directly with, uh, like, yeah, it could be other places as well. But at least start with Europe. Yeah. Our funding was. Um given by the Flemish government. So they uh, expect from us to work with Flemish companies first. So we're looking at the market there and looking who wants to join this research project. Um, what we're doing now is a technology transfer uh, process, which will take two years, in which we will um, develop together with the companies. And then it's just going to be the typical invention uh, fee that will be charged for later times when we, we will try to transfer the um, technology as such. But I think there's more to say for um, a sharing uh, of data. And I think we can play a role there as a neutral institution to try to oversee the data without um, giving insight to the different players of the combined data sources. So everybody feels free to give their data, but it will not be seen by other collaborative, collaborative partners, and that might be the key to getting a, a worldwide partnership going on. But we're still looking into it, we're very early. Um, so now, for now, it's gonna be Flemish market only. Thank you. Um, there is one last question, but we are over the 20 minutes, so I'm just uh, looking at Jerome, otherwise we... So you allow us to have two more questions? Okay, thank you. <laughs> so you can go ahead with your question. Um, 
Well, um, the, the thing uh, you're doing, Jonas, uh, it's something that we're trying to do. Well, I'm from Mexico, and uh, it's been a little bit hard because, like you said, venues don't want to share data and that stuff. Uh, yeah, but I, I was thinking um, instead of developing another algorithm to, I don't know, to be competitive like uh, w with the thing you're doing, um, in how many years do you think uh, you would be able to collaborate with other countries? Because uh, I'm a member of uh, different manager associations that are for more than uh, 16 uh, countries in Latin America. And uh, it would be really helpful to, uh, to show them that uh, there's been doing this in Flemish and then we could take it there. So we could start like collaboration. Well, all our publications will be public. So once we, pub uh, we publish something, we can share it with you, no problem. Um, I do not know what will, so I have to be very careful with what I promise you now. I don't want to promise you something I can't deliver. But um, at the latest in two years, everything will be public. And in this process of this next two years of technology transfer, we will do publications and these will all be public. Uh, and there we will describe the uh, statistical model behind it. But the statistical models as such are not that new. The, the, the new stuff is in the, the data sources. And that's a big challenge. So if you, um, if you want to uh, really convince your partners, you have to tell them, well, the technology is there. The technology is not nothing new, but it's the combination of data sources. That's where the knowledge is. And so if you can convince them of that, then they might be more willing to share the data with you. Thank you. Let's go to the next question. I don't Perfect. see you, but I, I trust you have I'm the right mic. I'm right here. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for the discussion so far. I had a slightly different question. If there is any synergy with the, m uh, with the film industry, because I'm, I'm familiar with an organization called Epagogics, and they try to run predictions on return on investment for certain movies, and they have a bunch of parameters. So who would you star in the movie? What kind of plot there would be? I was just wondering if from a research perspective there are some links there. There are some links, but I think um, at Pixel Music Research, we try to stay away from the music itself. It may sound weird, but I don't want to um, influence an artist in making choices, artistic choices, based on the algorithm that I'm creating. I want them to make their artistic choices from their artistic selves. And if they're trying to you, you read this sometimes now online. I'm writing for Spotify. I'm trying to optimize my song to get in a playlist. And I think that's a horrible idea. Um, you will always be too late if you work that way. So that's why we're not focusing on the music as such, like uh, which instruments do you use, how fast, how emotional, how many lyrics, what are the lyrics about? We're not focusing on that. But um, I think the, the basics of the research are probably the same. They're probably using the same uh, inferential statistics to try and predict based on a few parameters. But the parameters they're using are vastly different from ours. We're focusing on a concert, and they, I think, are more focusing on the content of a movie. Well, thank you. That's it for the question. Uh, if you have more questions during the break, uh, let's uh, get together and discuss. Um, I guess uh, by hearing those two talks, uh, we can really feel that uh, there is data is the next big thing, but uh, the industry is maybe not ready yet, not ready to share their data, with, which is the main, uh, I would say, food for, uh, for developing uh, uh, very smart uh, um, and useful services. But, uh, but the machine will never replace artistic creativity, uh, so we still need uh, the people behind it to, um, I mean, to program uh, very interesting artists, um, and that would be my conclusion. Thank you for listening, and let's meet at the break. Thank you. Thank you.